Well, after only two years, my hybrid heart valve is failing the same way that my last one did at 13 years. From the last video, you recall that my heart was failing. The ejection fraction was continuing to drop in the last couple years since the last surgery, and the shortness of breath is getting a lot worse, and I was awaiting the next echocardiogram. Last month, I had that echo, and in anticipation of that, I noticed during my PCP appointment in January or whenever, that this new doctor looked at me and said, well, you look pretty good to me. And it kind of dawned on me, I'm gonna end up getting penalized because I'm trying to be stubborn about this and just continue exercising and taking care of myself and make the most of quality of the time that I have left. As a result of that, I realized I had to create almost a worst case situation to make sure that these doctors are taking it serious that I have a real issue here. So prior to the echo, I started getting lazy about the cardio. I uh, didn't go swim every morning or even every other morning. And I started eating stuff that I would not normally eat. More carbs, more grains, desserts. And I porked on about 10 to 15 pounds before that echo. It was so bad that the night before the appointment with the general cardiologist, which was a few days after the echo, I woke up three times in that night, <gasps> like trying to gasp for air. Not good. My oxygen levels, according to the pulse ox, just sitting on the couch, were as low as 93. The first thing he said is that the ejection fraction is continuing to drop. In the first year after surgery settlement and that, it went down 10% from 45 to 41%. Now it's gone from 41 down to 30 to 35. So if I use an average of 32.5, it's gone from a 10% drop in a year to over a 20% drop in six months. And as you can see from the chart, the worse the ejection fraction, the higher chance of mortality, in other words, death. And of these deaths associated with this drop in heart failure, 40% of them are just sudden death, no warnings, which isn't the worst way to go. Feels like I'm knocking on heaven's door. And as bad as that is, it only gets worse. The reason the breathing is so much worse than the 41% ejection fraction, as we discussed in the last video, is because the valve that was just installed two years ago, this being a porcine hybrid valve, is already failing at two years compared to the last valve, the bovine hybrid, that I got 13 years out of it. Both of them are failing by a stenosis as opposed to a leaky valve. So for a leaky valve, that basically means that you have an opening here that you're trying to get blood through, right? So you're trying to shove blood through that valve and it's either open or it's closed. When it's closed, if these surfaces don't mesh right, they're not smooth, then you'll have leak, which means that some of the blood will go through and some of it will turn back around. That's why my mitral valve in the first place, the original native, was leaking because these surfaces weren't sealing and that's what causes this backflow. So you don't get all the blood out the other side for body functions, exercise, whatever to the muscles. That's a leak. Now in my case, with both of the hybrid valves, I was having a stenosis and that's different. So for a stenosis, you have this valve that you're trying to get through. Well, instead of it, you know, when it's closed is one thing, but when it opens, it's not opening all the way. So maybe it's, sealed part here or something. It's, and I know this is getting to look like an inappropriate picture, but forget about that. So anyway, you've got all this blood flow here trying to come through, but because this valve isn't opening well enough, you're only getting a portion of the blood out the other side. So you're having higher pressure built up over here 
and your flow is much less. So both of these cause a reduction in blood flow out the other side and that shortness of breath that we're talking about. Now with the leak, you can actually fix a leaky valve nowadays by going up through the femoral and going inside and where you have your old valve, they insert a new tissue valve in here that kind of pushes the old one out of the way and then that one will seal so this non-sealing valve is no longer a problem. However, in a stenosis, even if you put a new valve in there, it's not gonna open the other one that's failing to open. So the only way that we know of currently to fix this is to split the chest again. So in the discussion with the general cardiologist, I said, okay, my understanding is the only way to fix a stenosis valve like this is to split me open again, just like they did for the last time. He said, as far as I know, yes. And I said, from what I'm also told, nobody's gonna open me up again because I've been open too many times, too high of a risk, et cetera. Correct? He said, as of now, that's my understanding too. But he said, let's do some more tests and let's see where all the data shows you are. And then he'll have to get together with the interventional doctor, who's kind of like the mechanical guy, and the actual surgeon who did the last operation to see if there's anything they could do without opening me up that might alleviate this problem. He also said that the echo looked like my aortic valve, which is supposed to be tricuspid, is actually bicuspid, and I guess nobody's ever noticed before because there's too much other stuff going wrong, and I have another valve that's starting to leak, as well as, of course, the heart's already enlarged, etc. Ah, oh, I swear you can't make this stuff up, right? Oh, you get your new heart valve, you think you're okay? Bam! How about heart failure? Oh, you think that's not good enough? Bam! How about valve failure? I swear. This is like the comic icing on a triple layer tragedy cake. I also had an appointment with the PCP again after doing labs, blood urine analysis, and really everything looks good. Um, cholesterol is just a little bit high, which I attributed to the fact that I've been pigging out for you know a month or whatever before that. Not too worried about that. Everything else, believe it or not, my liver and kidneys even, <laughs> I guess, are doing okay. So everything else seems good. It's really just this heart issue. I also had an appointment with the electrical doctor last month. And usually he's pretty jovial, but this time he was a lot more somber and he just kind of hung his head and he said, man, he said, I, I wish it was something I'd done wrong or a mistake I'd made because, you know, electrically we can, we can do different things uh, to fix the rhythm and stuff. But he kind of sighs and he said, you know, you did the right thing to retire early. So it kind of tells you something right there. And then he, as he looks over the notes and stuff, he said, you know, even if, let's imagine, so they find some magic way to repair this failing valve or put a new one in or something without splitting you open. He said, even then, your heart function has dropped so much that you are at risk of sudden death basically any day. You know, that's just a byproduct of a failing heart, which I was well aware of. So it's good that he says that to just reinforce it, right? He talked about the possibility of installing a defibrillator, I guess, in case your heart does fail, this thing might be able to shock it back to life. There's also the Farsiga or whatever that drug was that we talked about in an earlier video. So there are these things that may extend life, but neither of them are gonna do anything for quality of life. So uh, I'll have some decisions to make at some point about that. We also talked a little bit more about the unwillingness to open me up again. and. Um, he kind of confirmed what I'd already understood anyway, is that with the sternum, if you think about, say, you know, a shoulder replacement or a hip replacement, they can take a bone and they can chop it off and they can put on this synthetic one. Actually, it probably doesn't look like that. It's more like this. And this would be synthetic. This is natural. And then put your joint on it and stuff. However, when it comes to the sternum, you've got your sternum. And then you got all your ribs and everything coming off of there, right? You know, it kind of looks like a spider, but anyway. For the sake of artistic freedom, here's your sternum. Remember the first time they sawed it down the center and they wired it back shut with titanium wire. 
The second time, well, it's actually the third time, right? Because I had two surgeries early and this third one a couple years ago. For this one, because all this is getting so weak now, they had to put titanium plate over it. But you have, you know, all this is cartilage everywhere at the joints and stuff. And that's one of the biggest fears is, you know, there's not a good way to just 3D print a new sternum or a new rib cage. Even if they won't do it and I get a second opinion somewhere that somebody will do it, then you have to look at the risk though. Um, if it's a high mortality risk, well then how far do you delay the procedure because you don't want to try to do something that's going to improve your life and all you end up doing is cutting yourself short. You also have to think about quality of life because if suddenly it's like, okay, you have this new synthetic rib cage, but you can't do anything, even lift weights, or you might break it. Well, that's, that's not living either. For next steps, I have a day scheduled at the hospital this coming week where I will get a TEE, CT scan, and a cath. And after they get all that data, the doctors will go back and knock heads to see what they can come up with. Like Sunshine said when we found out about the cancer, sometimes we don't like the answers the doctors give us. And this is probably gonna be one of those cases. If I don't like the answer at the end of May when I have my next follow-up, then the next option is to get a second opinion from somewhere in Houston or Mayo Clinic up in Rochester. And either I'm going to find out that there's some new way to do this, to fix things or make things better, or they're going to confirm what I've already been told here. I have to take logical steps though. I can't sit here worrying about the whole situation every day until I get another answer. So I have to take one step. Uh, I've had the appointments. The next step is to have this testing done this week at the hospital and then wait until May or whenever we get news on what the new plan is and address it at that time. It doesn't do any good to worry in between. Uh, if I do that, I'm just going to end up in a dark place and wrapped around the axle and that's not going to help me live my life to the fullest. I just have to take one step at a time until the point where there are no more steps. And at that point of acceptance, then I can just be in peace with that and just enjoy every day I do get left. Since finding out about the failing valve, now I can finally get back healthy, working out, uh, eating better, I've already lost 10 pounds since that appointment, so I'm getting back to where I need to be, and I can already tell an improvement in breathing, which is great. Having been through loss already once with sunshine, I kind of know the drill, so I've been making efforts to be as organized as I can for my family after the fact, as far as you know, house cleaned out, instructions on what to do, even wrote an obituary. So just trying to make it as easy as I can at what I know will be a hard time. Um, also trying to look at, even though it's very hard to commit right now without knowing more about medical appointments, trying to organize a trip, me and the dog, to drive up to Iowa and see family and have a gathering up there at the folks house. Also, while I'm up there, I can get together with old college buddies in Des Moines and kind of knock out all that at once. Beyond that, either I really have to do something, I really want to do something, or I'm not wasting my precious time on it. I'm just gonna take each day and enjoy it as much as I can every day that I get. Jake from Jacksonville is a buddy of mine from the old Florida days, and he's about my age. He's going through a second bout with cancer right now. And uh, he sent me the words he put together describing his battle that I thought were just awesome. So I wanted to read that. He said, I'm not gonna kneel and hang my head in defeat. I'm gonna stand tall and stare my executioner in the eyes as he takes off my head. Rock and roll, brother. Rock and roll. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel below. Hit the little bell for alarm. Check out the YCC merch store. See if there's anything you like. And live for today.